I like to start my sermons off with something a little bit lighthearted. I heard about this couple that were getting ready to get married, but both of them were really nervous because they had a secret that their fiancé didn't know about. The man came to his pastor and said, Pastor, I'm really, really nervous about getting married. The pastor looked at him and said, Well, what's the matter? Don't you love her? And he said, Yeah, I'm head over heels for her. I just love her, but I've got this problem. My feet, they stink. Man, do they stink. And the pastor said, It'll be okay. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to make sure that you thoroughly wash them at least twice a day, and then put socks on before you go to bed. Wear those socks throughout the night. You'll be fine. The woman came to the pastor's wife and came to her and with the same type of, I've got this problem. And the wife, the pastor's wife said to her, well, don't you love him? And she said, well, of course I do. I love him so much, but I've got a problem as well. I've got the worst morning breath. You know, in the morning, my breath, it's so rank, it's so foul. He's never going to love me if he finds out about my morning breath. The pastor's wife said to her, well, this is simple, too. You know, just make sure to brush your teeth. But more than that, set your alarm clock for a few minutes before he wakes up. Go grab some mouthwash, gargle it, hop back in the bed, and he'll never know about this problem. This couple gets married, and they're deeply in love, and the first few months of their marriage goes great. They're both handling their problems. But one night, just before daybreak, the husband wakes up, and he realizes he's missing one of his socks. And he starts frantically looking through the bed, trying to find his sock. He's freaking out. His wife wakes up and, without thinking about it, blurts out, what in the world are you doing? And he said, oh no, you eat my sock. <laughs> Western states. I think 
Minnesota and Wisconsin. Those people up there, they love their, their good chocolate. It's a good way to show their love. However, there is one state, which if you're a woman, I'm guessing you're probably wishing you lived in tomorrow, because one state, one state alone, the most common gift is jewelry. Only one state, though, and it's not Nebraska. It's Oregon. And of all states, I don't know why Oregon, but apparently they, they like to buy jewelry out in Oregon. Now, Nebraska is one of those unique states. We are not the state that most commonly gets flowers or chocolate or jewelry. The most common gift that husbands give to wives on Valentine's Day is, believe it or not, a day at the spa, which I think is pretty good. Well done, Nebraska men. I think we beat those Iowa men. Am I right? Maybe not on Fridays in the fall on the football field, but when it comes to Valentine's Day, that is when we win. But today is all about love. And, you know, sometimes I think we can overly complicate love. Am I right? Sometimes when we're trying to think about how do I tell my wife that I love them, and we, we think that we've got to come up with some type of complex way of of telling them how much they mean to us, they overly think it, when oftentimes it's just those three little words, I love you. And oftentimes, some of us are really good at doing that, but if you've been married like myself, sometimes we, we can forget to do this. When you leave for work, I love you. And we don't often think about it, but those three little words have so much to tell us and so much to, to share with our spouses. I was talking with the kids here a little bit ago, and a little bit of a warning about there being a shortage of Valentine's gifts. I was going to buy each kid one of these little candy heart things. They're sold out. It's all over the place. Um, but these little candy hearts, I love them. And there's these little sayings on them, and they change over the years. You know, like, hug me. X's and O's, and they, they've kind of updated them to include things like text me, uh, all these newer things. But there was a computer scientist who last year thought that we could be more creative. You know, we've been having these hearts for years and years, and they commonly say the same thing every year. And this computer scientist thought maybe computers can help us out. Maybe if we you know, bring the computers into our corner, they can come up with new sayings, fresh sayings, to express the love that we have in our marriages and in our relationships. And so what this woman did, this was just last year. So new computers, her name's Janelle Shane, she took all these different sayings, all these candy hearts, I love you, Hug me, X's and O's, all these different sayings, hundreds of different sayings. She fed them into her artificial intelligence computer and asked it to give us new sayings. And she thought she was going to come up with some type of way to come up with these new candy hearts. Do you want to hear what the computer came up for us, okay? So these are computers, and they're teaching us to love. The first thing that it spit out was love 2,000 hogs, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about those computers, right? All right, the second one's a little bit better, but once again, computers in love, they struggle. The second one is, hot stuff, my body is. <laughs> now, your spouse gives you this note, I'm not sure what you're going to think about this. But lastly, once again, computers coming up with new love messages. Probably the best one of all, this is a question. American Ocean Cabbage Delights. <laughs> now, how would you feel once again? Your loved one writes you a nice Valentine's note card and signs off by saying American Ocean Cabbage Delights. Not very filled with love, is it? But today is the day about love. And uh, I came across a really interesting 
interesting story down in South America. So this statue on the screen up here, you may recognize it because we very recently had the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro as well as the World Cup played every four years. And this statue up here on the screen is located in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And it's this massive, massive statue of Jesus. And Jesus is extending his arms out. And everywhere in the city of Rio de Janeiro, you can see Jesus. The statue stands 125 feet tall. Just this massive, massive statue. It's, it's a landmark there in Brazil. However, there is a sister city also in Brazil that wanted to build their own statue of Jesus. And as you can see here, it's underway. It's not completed yet, but this city is Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. And the people of Rio Grande do Sul wanted to build an even taller statue of Jesus. This statue of Jesus, once it's completed, is going to be 141 feet tall. So about 16 feet taller than the one in Rio de Janeiro. Which gets me thinking. You know, these people in Brazil, they're Christian people, they're largely Catholic people. But how cool would that be if we here in America, rather than trying to build taller skyscrapers all the time, or trying to do something bigger and bolder to show that we're stronger in business or whatever it might be, if we got concentrated on building these statues of Jesus, showing our faith for the world, I think that's really neat that they're doing this in Brazil. But where it really stands out to me about this new statue, so the new statue is going to be called Christ the protection. And when it's completed, they're going to have something unique inside of this statue. You'll see that Jesus' chest, he's got his hands raised out like this, but when it's complete, they want to put an observation deck in the place of his heart. Right there in the middle. And the purpose, the intention behind this is that the people for the very first time would focus on what Jesus is most concerned about. What is inside of Jesus' heart? We read through the Gospels, but if you really nail down to what Jesus is most concerned about, what is inside of his heart? And people will be able to go up into the statue, see the sides, see for miles and miles, but they would be asked to reflect upon Jesus' heart. What Jesus really cares most about. Our Gospel message for this morning is the Sermon on the Mount. And I think it's very appropriate for today, I mean, near Valentine's Day, because I'm convinced it gets at Jesus' heart. What Jesus is most concerned about. Because Jesus teaches us a lot. He teaches us to love. He teaches us to forgive. He is a healer. He is a provider. He died for us. He rose for us. But what is Jesus most concerned about? I think he really gets to it in the Sermon on the mount. And I love it because it's short and it's quick. Like those candy hearts, they're short and they're quick. They're not overly lengthy, but they really get at the heart. So if you would please pull over your bulletin one more time with me this morning. Page six. As Jesus gets at the heart, what does Jesus really care about? We are looking at Jesus' heart. Beginning in verse 20. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. Now what is Jesus trying to teach us here? What is the heart of Jesus' ministry? What is the heart of the, the whole reason he came to this world? I think today, this morning, he's trying to teach us, he's trying to tell us, don't judge who you are. Don't judge the way God sees you. Don't judge the way Jesus sees you right now based on your current circumstance. If you look like you've got life all put together, if you look like you're wealthy, if you look like you know 
you've got life figured out. It's an outward appearance. Jesus is concerned with your heart. But even more than that, if you're down right now, if you're suffering right now, if you feel like you're being uh, put down or persecuted, if you're, if you're sick, if, if you're worried about your life and your job, and if you worry that you know, the world is just looking down on you right now, then many of us are in this place right now. Jesus reminds you that life is so much more than appearance. Life is so much more than what the rest of the world sees you. And I love this. It's a Scottish proverb, and it's really good. Do not judge by appearance. A rich heart may be under a poor coat. Do not judge by appearance. This Valentine's Day, may you know that you are loved by God. May you know that you are cherished by God. And no matter where you are in this moment of your life, God sees into your heart and God loves you. God claims you in your baptism. You are loved and you are cherished by the eternal God, creator of this world. Amen? Amen. Oh, come on, you're loved by God. Let's do better than that. Amen? Amen. Amen.